。Free Run Episode Two。長距離魔法は魔法使いに必須な三つの要素の合わせ技で構成されているんだけど。Just hooked right into the teaching。さっきは途中で魔法が離散してしまったね。魔力の量と打ち出す力が足りないことを示している。It seems like the strength is there. I don't know. It could turn out that she turns out to be a, a prodigy, one that just commands her, her attention and training. It's a kind teacher so far. What is Freerun's ultimate goal? Is it just like commitment to her craft? She mentions going around getting spells. This guy's just continuously basking in his underwear. The man knows what he likes. Seems like he found a lot of meaning in training this girl, or taking in this girl. But he's now passing on to somebody he really trusts. Fern. The time skips in the show are unreal. This guy has a plan. He sees where it's going. Oh no! Well, that plan is starting now, becoming realized now. He said something keeping him going. Past his limits. It's not about the grimoire. Whoa! That sound. All right, it was not the quick study I imagined. Right, there's a big time limit here. There's something very Violet Evergarden about the show. I mean, Free Run herself reminds me of Violet. Hurukukaranojujinonakshimashite. Wow, that's a crushing weight, but really honorable. That's a lot to drop on a little girl, <laughs> but I mean, appropriate, I guess, given the circumstances. This is a tough one because it kind of hurts. It's one of those things that once you see, you can't unsee, for better or for worse. There are certain people I admire so much. Just being in their presence casts a, a light, a glaring light on my own deficiencies, which is really useful if painful. More broadly, it's everything. You know, it's like every person that came before you, all the pain and suffering, all the struggling against the impossible odds to get me, society, whatever, to this exact moment where I'm living in tremendous luxury. And I'm not like an extremist in this position. I think some of that luxury, some of that peace time, that quiet, the leisurely enjoyment of life, that's a reward for the people who sacrificed before. Because why struggle if it doesn't lead to something good or it's something you're not enjoying, right? But at the same time, to look at it that way can create this feeling of responsibility to then, well, I mean, importantly, not let it slip to protect it, but then also to, to make your own contribution to it. What's cool about it, I think, is that it doesn't have to be something super grand like saving the world, like literally just leaving a, a positive impact of any kind. Contributing more than you take, let's say, is one way to think about it, is a win in like this iterative process. Process of human life, and if you want to get really crazy with it, you can say it's like a mission from God, you know, like from creation itself. Why have anything? You know, why is there existence? Why do humans fight and struggle against forces of death, decay, atrophy? It's kind of easy to say it's meaningless.、Uh, it's easy to brush aside that feeling of responsibility, and honestly, I don't judge that too severely. But it's a lot more. It's a lot more exciting, but also a lot more difficult to see that as a grand purpose for which one plays their own role. Not much is clear. Oh no, no, he he wouldn't. That's off. The knowing I'll be fine, I think, is the critical part of that. Not the like any one specific thing. Sign you. She was hinting at something about the grimoire that we we didn't get the full sentence for. Give some good news about the rock. It's fake. He may have known that already. Ah, he didn't have to use the rock. 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 He didn't have to All those years, I <laughs> didn't figure it out. Yeah, you really do need to understand people. Oh, he wants to. 
pass in solitude. Major <laughs> character moment here. I mean, I know she's gonna say yes, but imagine if she didn't. She's talking about herself to some degree, too. They've always really understood her, despite her, her outward seeming coldness. He's a wise man. I mean, he's trying to do good with his life. In the ways that he, he knows how. Oh, and it's inspired by Himmel. It's a great friendship right there. That they're all influencing each other. I'm sure Himmel got similar things from them. She got it. Yeah. I, like, I wasn't ready to write her off. I mean, I think she has a good heart. She's just a little bit like... It's not meanness, it's more just obliviousness. One for, one for me, one for my homie, Mr. Hyder. Two for my homie, Hyder. Episode 2, it didn't have to be magic. Interesting that our timeline is based on the death of Himmel the hero. Oh, are we side questing? We're side questing. Did all that for tea? <laughs> painted tea? Yeah, yeah, that's my question too. What is the ultimate? Is that it? Is it just a hobby? Is it just for the love of magic? Or is there some larger quest? Interesting conversation. Are they? Looks like we're getting paid in tea again. It's a familiar face. Is that the Demon King? Oh, this is the woman. That was not the Demon King, that was too easy. Yeah, people forget. Like she was probably there. <laughs> I don't know, their friendship's so cool, even though we haven't really seen a lot of it. We've seen the after effects of it. Weird tangent, but my close friends, I mean, they, they're everything to me. But I know them really well, and I see their glory, the glory that everyone else sees. But I also know their deviousness, you know, I know like what's underneath the glory, and they know mine. But funnily enough, if you really, really care about someone, you love them for those things too. It depends what they are in net. <laughs> Little vain. I mean, you can. I mean, if you're Himmel the hero, you can be a little bit vain. If Himmel the hero can't be vain, who can? Oh, she really knows them too. Bro, you're, there's squirrels in your house, <laughs> eating your nuts. I had a wild squirrel once. It's the squirrels that are eating your nuts. What? This is more than just the side quest that it appears, though. Right. I think that's the same thing. <laughs> these these woods montages. At least one per episode. Man, I hope we can get some story going before this girl dies. You should not let Free Run control your schedule. <laughs> she will just... <laughs> You'll be in the same place till you die. Do your own scheduling. That's, that's what I'm afraid of for you. There it is. 
I don't know, tough to say. It's a valid point to raise, but there's more to it. Some of the most important things that I've ever heard is that I've ever heard of it. It might end up being a great conversation, too. I'm not a person who's 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 Maybe the squirrel will help us. The whole you could be doing more thing is tricky. Yeah, she has the power to save a lot of people. First of all, she has. Secondly, it all goes wrong if she horribly self-destructs. And third, this is this feels like a, a moment of destiny and a moment of awakening. She's got to work on this. She feels called to. That's enough. But yeah, the time limit is a real concern, practically. I just realized or just had the thought that we saw old man Himmel as still being kind of vain. But there's a challenge there in his aging and like slide into irrelevance. Why do you yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Could be, but... More apathetically. I mean, something already had occurred by the time she decided to fight the Demon King. That's not apathetic at all. <laughs> There's also something very Final Fantasy X in this, where you're on the journey, but you're also getting the, the original journey. There you are, you little bastard. <laughs> we'll see. Well, now you can spread him. My friend is still alive, so it's a victory. Never doubt me again. It'll come out. Yeah, there's a little bit of a question there. There are plenty of instances for me where, you know, I'm on a trajectory and I'm kind of just following my nose, just experimenting, trying different things, and then something hits and it's like, oh, it's interesting and kind of random. But then I think about it and I'm like, actually, there's a lot, a lot of build up to this, a lot of signs pointing to this, a lot of real life foreshadowing. And then you wonder if maybe it, it couldn't have gone any other way. The fact that I've been living abroad for like 10 years now was something my friends revealed to me as a, a really long held plan. Like I, I apparently have been talking about this since I was nine. I just didn't remember. The fact that I watch and talk about media, my first job was in media. I've always been insatiably talkative to the point where I used to talk into a tape recorder by myself. I was one of the first adopters of YouTube before anyone knew what YouTube was. I think it was like 2006 or seven, something insane like that. A lot of signs point to this moment. And yeah, it could have been something else, but like, at the same time, could it have been? It's tough because the feeling that you have a lot of control and that you're choosing your life is the source of a lot of what I think is really important for, for self-esteem and just like faith in the world and faith in yourself. It's a little bit disheartening in a certain way to give up the control like, well, I'm just on a track, you know, I just am what I am. You, <laughs> I want to believe that like I chose my life, but maybe it's not mutually exclusive. There's a parallel universe where I did nothing with that aptitude. Not to say I couldn't do a lot more. Arigato ne, Freelance. She looks really happy. There's some closure there for her. Wow, another... <laughs> no action, but beautiful episode. It's not really what I expected. I think the one episode I was in the room for was extremely action-packed. It was like this huge battle between multiple adorable female mages. I wonder if I'll recognize that episode when I when I watch it. But yeah, I'm fine with this, this, like, this heartfelt journey. <laughs> it's a one's past and memories and future and motherhood. I get the sticking point for her in wanting to do the flowers. It's insignificant. Himmel wouldn't have cared. You know, he just loved Free Rin. The town probably doesn't really care aside from the woman. But things of symbolic significance are more than they appear a lot of the time. Sometimes you just get possessed by things you know you have to do, and then you have to do them. That personal radar is powerful. I think God-given. There was a question of is it for him or is it for her? It's for her, and that's okay. It's great, actually. It's a way of physically acting out and expressing and bringing to the surface and internalizing something that her subconscious is kind of pushing up at her, which is like respect, appreciation, depth of love. And doing a kind of ritual like this or something symbolic like this, where you have a, a real feeling of narrative closure, of joy in completing a task or an act or whatever, ends up being what I think is like a cornerstone. You've added like a gem to your overall being. I'm sure I could probably find a better personal example than this, but just what's coming to mind immediately. As I mean, some of you may know or like may have pieced together, I was living in Jeju Island for a while and it was a time of like a really intense 
exciting but very difficult romantic relationship and Jeju Island is it's basically a volcano it's like the Hala volcano and the whole time I was living there I was like I'm not leaving this island without climbing to the top of the volcano and then the relationship ran its course it ended in spectacular fashion as of course it did super dramatic and I decided to move to Seoul and on my final day in Jeju I decided to climb Hala and I went with a couple of German tourists I had met hiked I don't know three hours up the mountain got to the the final checkpoint <laughs> and then was told that the top was closed for weather. There was like a sudden blizzard and like, I was so pissed. Like, man, can I just have one thing go right for me on this island? I just wanted to have a little bit of closure, say farewell to this chapter of my life. But it was so absurd, I just like burst into laughter. I mean, that in itself was therapeutic. Like that kind of was a way, a narrative way to close that chapter, which I appreciated. It's like, of course it went wrong. Everything on this island has gone wrong. I don't know, maybe it sounds stupid, but I value those moments. I value those sort of mini arcs, little vignettes that are packed with personal significance, emotion, the bittersweet nature of like the adventures and its difficulties, and also like saying goodbye to it. We're seeing a lot of themes already in the first two episodes, and Fren asks, why not do more? Why not go out and save people? Well, this is something that makes Freerun better, and it ties back to what, I already forgot his name, Height was saying about Himmel, that seeing his greatness created an obligation and a responsibility. Well, that's probably true for Freeman as well, and this is maybe her way of getting there. It's like prayer, you know, it's fostering that appreciation, which will be internalized and will create an added level, level of depth and therefore, you would hope, determination for action. Mm -hmm.